So you may notice that I'm in a different space. That is because I worked on this space for two weeks. This is in my basement and I just wanted it to be really colorful and fun and very inspiring. So I made my craft room aesthetic basically. <laughs> in this video, I am gonna be talking about how I made Princess Peach. I really love this character. I was really excited to do another Peach cosplay and when I saw this, I knew I had to make it. This outfit really resonated with me because I love all things vintage and just that 1950s, 60s aesthetic and she just did that and I, I had to be her. <laughs> so yeah, I was really bummed that this outfit wasn't even in the video game, but who cares? I still love the design anyways. Before we jump in, I really want to thank Fabric Wholesale Direct for sponsoring this material. I really enjoy working with Fabric Wholesale Direct. Not only do they have a lot of different options, they're super affordable as well. I used it for my Peach cosplay, I've used their material for Zelda, and I've also used their material for Retsuko as well. I just, I enjoy the quality of the fabric and it's super affordable as well. I am a firm believer that anybody can do cosplay and it doesn't have to break the bank. And Fabric Wholesale Direct is an amazing example of that. So definitely go check them out. So I know in my Retsuko video, I offered a free pattern, but unfortunately I don't have the time to make a pattern for Peach. I really want people to have access to patterns and I'm really working hard and I'm learning how to make patterns for plus size people. So please be patient with me. Um, so in this video, unfortunately I do not have patterns ready at the moment, but I'm hoping that one day I will have enough knowledge and feel comfortable enough selling some patterns uh, because that's my goal. My goal is to make patterns for all sizes. And I, my, one of my goals is to make patterns for plus size people. So that means one X to five X. So please be patient with me. I am, <laughs> I'm gonna learn. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in. This is the packaging that everything comes in. I think it's just so cute. Here is the white stretch broadcloth and here is where it stretches right here. I love it so much. What you're gonna need for this project is some interfacing. That's gonna be for the collar and it's also gonna be for the cuffs as well. And for the back closure, you're gonna need a seven inch invisible zipper. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is contemplate all your life choices and then second guess yourself. This is usually how the process works. I don't make the rules. And then you're gonna to, gonna to go ahead and cut your fabric. So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to make our hem. The easiest way to do that is to iron it. And I have been using this ruler so much. It has helped me measure how long I want my hem to be. And it's just a great tool. I actually have an Amazon link down below if you wanna check it out. Um, but yeah, this tool is definitely an essential in my sewing room. After that, I sewed my hem. You can do this multiple different ways. I just did a simple straight stitch all along the hem. You can do an invisible hem, but I was a little bit in a time crunch, so this worked out for me, but you can definitely do a blind hem if you want. So once we're done with the hem, we can finally start pleating. These pleats are called box pleats. And what I'm doing is I'm measuring to see how far down I need to go to uh, make my box pleats lay flat. So I'm gonna show you right here, right after I'm done pinning. Pinning, pinning, pinning. Okay. So I am gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna measure four inches. So one, two, three, four. I'm gonna fold it over and then I'm gonna pin it. And then I'm gonna iron it so it lays flat. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ruler again, I'm gonna measure four down, so one, two, three, four. Then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna take my ruler and measure my pleat to be four inches. So remember, you want your pleat to be four inches and you want the inside to be four inches. And then you want your stitch down to be four inches. 
And this is the part where I screwed up. These crayons are permanent, so yeah, I messed up big time. Uh, yeah. Casey, they don't scratch off. So after I used some Dawn dish soap, I then sewed the pleats. You could still kind of see the crayons, but another couple rounds of Dawn uh, soap, it took care of that. So those dots actually help. Just make sure that you get invisible ink or whatever it's called, washable ink. I don't know, it's at the craft store. But now I am cutting the belts for both the skirt and the belt for the gem piece. I don't know why I made two belts, but I just felt like making two belts. So now what I'm doing is I am folding it and ironing it. After we're done ironing it, we're then gonna sew it and flip it right side out. So I have a little trick to folding inside the ends and sewing it and yeah, that's pretty much it. I just fold inside the ends and sew it. That's my lazy way of finishing ends without turning it inside out and sewing it. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and you guessed it, iron it again. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add the waistband to the skirt. So that's the skirt inside out. And now we're gonna flip it over. So it's easier on us. Flip it over, Casey. There you go. So flip it over and take your band that you just sewed and put it on the skirt like this. When you flip it over, it's gonna look like that. Once we've sewed and ironed our waistband, we're next gonna move on to the invisible zipper. This color didn't match completely, but meh, it didn't matter since we're not gonna be able to see the zipper, since hence it's called an invisible zipper. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna go ahead and take our zipper facing the right way, and then we're gonna go ahead and flip it over. I know invisible zippers are very intimidating for a lot of us, and it was very intimidating for me for a long time, but I promise you, these few steps are gonna really help change your game with invisible zippers. So go ahead and pin it so we can get ready for the next step. This has been a huge game changer for all my cosplay things. These are many different types of sewing feet that will help you in your sewing projects. I got this for Christmas and let me tell you, it has made such a difference with all my cosplay needs. So we're gonna go ahead and find the invisible zipper foot. And this is what the manual looks like. I really love this. I am gonna leave a link down below of where you can get this on Amazon. It is a huge game changer and it's so easy to put in. Ready, set, boom, so easy. <laughs> um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, gonna pull the teeth towards us so we can be able to sew right underneath that fold. If you're having trouble trying to grab the teeth and trying to sew underneath, you can use an iron, but this works for me. And you are done with the zipper. Look at that, that is so beautiful. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna flip it inside out and then sew the rest of the skirt. Thank you. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and take our handy dandy iron and press everything down and also press our seams. Pressing your seams in a cosplay really helps make the cosplay a little bit more professional and it just gives it a really nice finish. And now we're done with the skirt. So go ahead and get your pieces ready for the shirt. I am cutting the collar interfacing first and then after that I'm gonna go ahead and cut two pieces for my collar. So the first piece is for the interfacing top and then the second piece is for the bottom. So this type of interfacing that I got is an iron-on interfacing. I'm still learning the world of interfacing in all its glory. So if you have any questions, I would definitely look more online or if you're in the store, ask an associate or sometimes even customers that are in the store will know. I have had so many instances where I'm shopping and I'm asking an employee a question and then someone in the line behind me will be like, oh my gosh, this, you need to use this, don't use this. And yeah, I just, I love crafting people. You just find them wherever you go and this is the result so once we go ahead and fix the edges a little bit we're gonna go ahead and iron it again so it all lays flat We're almost there, so go ahead and cut out the remaining pieces. Like I said before, I self-drafted these patterns, so these are my own mock-ups and all that kind of stuff. If you want to learn how to mock-up, I highly recommend going to a thrift store and finding a cheap pair of bed sheets and just going to town. Take some old clothes that are in your closet and start taking them apart and re-putting them back together. That's pretty much how I learned. So once I found the fold in the material, I then folded it again where my shirt and the collar was gonna meet and just make it flat. I will say though, this trick is meh, it's all right. I would definitely learn another way to do the collar. Okay, now onto the sleeves. This is how I make my rouge sleeves. You can definitely do it in the sewing machine, but I don't like doing it in the sewing machine because for some odd reason it just always makes it smaller than I want it to. So this way it is just so much easier to control the ruffles and make them how big or how small. Um, yeah, so I'm going to show you how to do it right here. So take a needle and you're going to want to feed it through the fabric. So kind of like this. So just fold it together. And then once you're done with that, go ahead and take your armband and just put it there. See, this is why I love doing this so much because I can just figure out where I want my ruffles to be and then yeah, it just works that way. Next, we're gonna use our handy dandy hot ruler. I did the bottom hem of this and then I also did the front part of the shirt where the buttons are gonna be. So yeah, let's go ahead and sew the bottom of this. Uh, again, I just used a straight stitch and then we're gonna use the buttonhole machine. Uh, this is one of the sewing feet that come with that Amazon kit that I talked about before. It is super easy to use and I absolutely love this. So this was all going really well and I was really excited to do buttons and then this happened. God damn it. Golly, it is sure a wonderful day to make buttonholes. Thank you, sewing machine, for making this for me. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Oh, wow, these buttonholes look fantastic. Man, it sure would be a shame to ruin this whole cosplay by a few buttonholes. Didn't I make a video specifically talking about how not to do this? Oh, well, I am a professional. I'm gonna take this. Oh, wait, what's this? Safety pins. <laughs> I don't need those. I'm a professional, like I said. All right, take this and rip. You done messed up. Oh God, oh God, oh God, what am I gonna do? God, do I have to make that again? So much for being a professional. Way to go there, genius. You know what? Just yeet this. I'll just thrift a shirt. Okay, so that's not what I really did. I went to the craft store and I did what any good cosplayer would do. I got iron on Velcro. 
as a cosplayer, we're going to make some mistakes. And I feel like it's really important to kind of improvise on those mistakes. And this iron on Velcro was actually pretty nice. And I found out that I liked this way better than my button idea. So accidents happen, things happen. You just got to improvise and just not get too frustrated and figure out a new way to make your costume. And that is it for Peach. I really enjoyed making this, even though the shirt was a huge struggle for me. It's really empowering knowing that I can overcome that, even though if it's ironed on Velcro. I really love the skirt, and this is just a pretty costume. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, leave down in the comments below. Next week, I will be releasing a video of how I made the hat, the gem, and the earrings. I really hope you learned something today, and I will see you next week.